Hi folks, Alex Klingelhafer here with Exential Wealth Advisors. It's 649 here in the middle part of the country. It is Tuesday, April 6, 2021. Here's your morning jog around the economic headlines of the world. Uh, the EU had a memo leaked to Bloomberg uh, overnight that says they're going to immunize their population by the end of June. Now, that's an, sort of a, an aggressive target given where they have been on the vaccination front. The memo says, hey, we haven't had enough vaccinations. We're going to have some additional supply. I think the, the graphic right here, yeah, you can see uh, getting about, oh, I don't know, two and a half, three times as many vaccines. Specifically, getting some J&J &J vaccines that are only one dose is going to help them immunize their population. Of course, if they could get their entire population vaccinated or very close to vaccinated, 60% is what they're calling for by June, that would be terrific. Now, let's go to the, the, the data and sort of see, we've talked about the bifurcation. How far is Europe behind the US? And the answer is, of course, quite a bit. Right, the U.S. doing about in, in Saturday they we had four million, rolling seven-day average three million doses of COVID vaccine. U.S. is doing approximately one percent, or just a little under one percent of the population per day. Of course, in a quarter that gets you to ninety percent really fast. Europe is doing about a third of that. That's what we've been talking about for the last few weeks. They're doing about a third of what the U.S. is doing to get to their target by June, right? They're gonna have to do about seven tenths, eight tenths of a percent a day for an entire quarter, right? 0. 0.7 times, times uh, 0.9, right? That's what they're gonna do to, to get to 65% because they've got 90 days in the quarter till, till the end of June. That's gonna be their average. Right now, they're they're about a third of that. So they're starting way behind. Uh, that seems like an aggressive target to me. It seems like the data shows, you know, even as a country can ramp up, they can't ramp up that fast. Um, you know, maybe August or, or late July is, is a more realistic target. Uh, Germany uh, finance Mr. minister Olaf Scholz agreed with Janet Yellen's comments about a global more minimum corporate tax rate. We talked about her delivering a speech yesterday calling for a global minimum tax rate to coincide with the Biden plan. Interestingly, she called for a 21% rate, which is the current U.S. rate, even though the president she serves under is calling for a 28% U.S. tax rate. Interesting. Um, Lower taxes for the rest of the world, a little higher in the U.S. Yes, we're a developed economy. Uh, we will see if that deal gets done. Uh, Schultz said they could do it by summer. That'd be that'd be great, having some 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 parity there. A U.S. industry auto group talked about the need for additional chips to be set aside. They they say that about 1.4 million cars could be unproduced because of a chip shortage. Now, if you do a little bit of a deep dive on, on what this big chip shortage headline is, it's really for cheap, older chips. That's what the industry is facing a shortage of. Car makers, uh, refrigerator makers, all these appliance makers use these things called display drivers, make screens work. The reason that the chips are in a shortage is because there's really no economic incentive to make additional supply lines. The technology is old, the returns on investment aren't great, the margins are very small. So I don't see this chip shortage ending too soon given that it's really for these legacy chip products. Uh, again, this US industry auto group is calling for some of those chips to be saved for the auto industry, maybe save some jobs there. Of course, that takes it away from, from other industries. I'm not sure really how that's going to work out for the economy as a whole. And this is just something to, to keep an eye on. I'm not a geopolitical expert, uh, but certainly there is some saber rattling going on between Ukraine and Russia and, and Moscow and the Kremlin. 
Uh, Ukraine says, hey, we really want to be a part of NATO, get into that treaty to sort of defend us from, from uh, you know, Russian aggression, etc. Just something to keep an eye on uh, as there are troops mounting on both sides. Uh, as we head into to Q2, of course, if there was some conflict in the region, that would cause some instability in European markets. That's what I had for the day. If you want additional information throughout the day, feel free to follow me on Twitter. It's OKCCFACFP. Until then, I'm out.